Hey all, Siege here, and today I thought we might shift away from future speculation and look at where some of the inspiration for frames in the game most likely came from. I think that some of the Warframes have origins or adaptation stories that are a little bit more convoluted than others, but some are pretty obvious, and because of that I want to start with the one I feel is probably the most well-known of them all, and that's the Monkey King himself, Wukong. For those of you that know a little bit about Sun Wukong, you know that he shows up in all kinds of different media, but the one he's probably most known for, by gamers at least, is for this guy right here. Yeah, that's right. If somehow you didn't know it, Sun Goku is an interpretation of Sun Wukong in the Dragon Ball anime. So, you're Sun Wukong, right? Damn it! I'm Sun Goku, yes? Roll with it. One of, if not, the greatest show to ever grace our screens. Don't even try to come at me in the comments about it. But, I mean, you probably already knew that anyhow. What you might not have known is that Goku and Warframe's Wukong are loose interpretations of the Sun Wukong derived from Journey to the West, a 16th century Chinese novel presented as an allegorical blueprint for the concept of enlightenment. I'm going to do my best to truncate this whole thing into a video that doesn't keep you here literally all day, but if you're interested in learning more about the full story of Journey to the West, I'll leave a link in the description for Overly Sarcastic Productions, a channel who describes the story itself in a very fun and interesting way. Please give that a look if you have time and want to be entertained. This story, which comprises over 2,000 pages in its entirety, is batshit crazy, and I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, in it, one of the main characters is a stone monkey born from a rock that was created at an intersection of heaven and earth. And much like no egg you've ever heard of, transformed into a beautiful baby Sun Wukong. Waking up to this new world, bowing to the four corners, and accidentally shooting laser beams out of his eyes into heaven. Can you see where this is headed? Okay, so next, he gathers up a group of normal monkeys and leads them to an abandoned, fully furnished palace underneath a waterfall. And of course, they crown him king for that, hence the title of Monkey King. Now, being king for hundreds of years was not necessarily fulfilling, and upon witnessing the death of another of his group, he begins a quest for true immortality, or the basis behind his third ability, Defy, where Wukong becomes invulnerable to all attacks. Now, he ventures out to find an immortal sage named Subuti to learn how to achieve this immortality, and when Subuti agrees to be his mentor, he officially gives him the title of Sun Wukong. So, now you also know where his name came from. Fun fact. Even though he is successful and becomes immortal during his years of training with this sage, it's actually not the only time he would encounter a or many means of immortality. Oh no, see, there's this one instance, right? Where he's appointed to tending the Garden of the Peaches of Immortality, a job bestowed upon him by the Great Jade Emperor, who was kind of like the King of Heaven at the time, if you will. And if you ever watched Dragon Ball, you know Goku has a rather large appetite. Well. Instead of guarding the fruit, he kind of eats all the peaches instead, granting him an additional level or maybe even levels of immortality. I'm not really sure how that works. But the problem is the Queen of Heaven is holding a peach festival like right then. And upon walking in with her seven maidens and seeing an entire forest completely empty of peaches, Wukong decides to paralyze the whole group, change his appearance to mimic a registered guest of the festival, an ability called the Art of the Earthly Multitude, something the sage also taught him how to do, along with some other really incredibly OP things that we'll discuss more in depth later. And he almost immediately empties the party of all the immortal spirits, getting him incredibly wasted, but also adding another layer of immortality as, well, that's what the heavenly booze does. And while he's all drunked up, he does that whole walk of shame into another heavenly alchemical lab and promptly eats three gourds worth of immortality pills. Ha, <laughs> the munchies. I've been there. What can I say? Maybe not from alcohol. Oh, I should also mention that using the ability offers up to 72 extra lives for Wukong. One for each transformation, should he choose to use them all. If you've ever wondered how your Wukong stays alive during Defy, as well as with his five levels of immortality passive, you now know, and where those levels actually came from. Now, 
Let's talk about some of those other abilities Sabuti bestowed upon Wukong. First, there is the Cloud Somersault. Some of you may have already guessed, but this is the ability that is characterized by Cloudwalker in the game and in many different instances of media is personified by the Nimbus Cloud. Probably the most famous adaptation of that cloud would be Goku riding it around in Dragon Ball, but its makeup in the Journey to the West is kind of weird. One, it's not really a cloud until it needs to be. Like, there are instances where the cloud somersault is used to catapult himself from cloud to cloud, but there are also instances where he's able to transport a large group of individuals on it. So I guess what's important here is when you're out there cloud walking, now you know where that came about, and it's really up to you if you want to take anyone with you. Moving on, let's look at his cloning ability, or Celestial Twin, as most of you know it. You might have been asking how this was achieved, and in actuality, Sun Wukong would use the hairs on his body to transform into literally any other figure. And each of those individual hairs can also become a Celestial Twin. Here's the beauty part, though. He has 84,000 hairs on his body. So if you're thinking Warframe's downplaying the ability at one twin, you're grossly underplaying it. Slackers. The ability itself is known as the Shen Wei Shen Fa, or body outside of body technique. And in case you didn't think this was OP enough, he can also change any one of those 84,000 potential clones into basically whatever he wants. Could be a person, could be an animal, could be a demon, could be a brown leather sofa. It really doesn't matter. Wukong would literally be the life of any party, you know? Shit, he is the party. 84,000 strong, too. And last but not least, let's look at his final ability, Primal Fury, or as I like to call it, Iron Staff. Did you ever wonder why it changes sizes when you're using it? Well, my dear friends, that's because it's not actually a staff. See, in the novel, Wukong needed a weapon to better protect himself and his kingdom, even though he's like five times immortal and basically as strong as Goku, or is Goku as strong as him, whatever, due to the training of the monk. And so he dives down into the Dragon Palace in the Eastern Ocean, okay? And asks or maybe threatens the Dragon King. Not really sure what the actual interpretation is on that, but in the end, after dismissing all the potential offers he was given, he decides instead to take a magic size changing iron pillar and converts it into his staff. Did I mention that the staff is incredibly heavy? That's because it's a pillar. Meant to hold up structures and buildings and shit. I suppose the heft in game would largely be dependent on your build, but this is why the weapon changes its shape and size so often. They made him a suit too, by the way. I'm not sure if this is it or not. In the end, Sun Wukong is, to put it lightly, an eccentric character largely appearing to just want to have fun and be mischievous in the novel. He's a character with cosmic power, immortality, godlike strength and stamina, and even the ability to fly without a true agenda and outside of being trapped under a mountain and then rescued in order to protect a group of people, he's just kind of there. He's not even considered the main character of the novel, if you can believe that. You know, if I think about it, actually reminds me of a character in Warframe that isn't the main character, but also has cosmic power, invulnerability, can teleport, shapeshift, mimic other characters, and is generally mischievous without a true agenda. At least, not one that's been verified yet. You know who I'm talking about. Seriously though, what if the man in the wall is nothing more than a reflection of the character of Sun Wukong? Is that even possible? I think a couple people in the comments have actually made mention of that in the past. Regardless, I'd say we should all brush up on our journey to the West understanding, because I promise you the idea of something like this will make you completely rethink any interpretation most people have of that character. A god without an agenda can be an incredibly helpful idea or an incredibly terrifying notion. Which is he, if he is? With all that being said, though, I'm curious. Did you know any or all of this? Is this type of video, one you'd be interested in more like it in the future? One thing you might not know is Sun Wukong and Prince Neja have fought before. So there's definitely more to talk about if you're interested. Will you be trying to color your Wukong in orange and blue? I've tried, but the skins I currently have, it just doesn't work right. That's right. Never underestimate my dorkiness. I promise I can still surprise you. At any rate, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. 
I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll talk at you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.